Cindy Percival raccoon with carvings and nice painting and everything. I've raccooned lots of rain sticks and they go through the fire and it's fine. So if that's the process you want to use, that would, be, that would work really well. They're all low fired. You can't put these rain sticks in higher fires. So you'll bisque fire it and then you'll put it back through the bisque fire again. And I'll talk about ways to do finishing on them along the way. So just a little bit of history about the rain stick is they're considered a percussion instrument and this, the sound of the play balls running through it is reminiscent of rain. And it was invented by the Chilean tribes in South America. They used dried cactus and pushed the thorns through the other direction and then put seeds or beans, sand, uh, pebbles, and I guess cactus must be in sections, it already has ends on it. But eventually they were used for ceremonial music and dancing and de they were decorated with symbols of rain and crops and the weather. So I'm just going to get right into to demonstrating this. So I'm using Sculpture Raku, which is a clay planet clay, it's a cone 10 clay even though I'm not going to comb 10 with this. And I rolled this slab about a quarter inch to three eighths inch thick. And the first thing I am going to do is remove the canvas texture from the surface. Oh, do you want to there pass this out? There's a the hand tables. out there. I always remove the canvas texture, not on the inside because you'll never see it, but I don't want it to compete with whatever texture I want to put on here. And these scrapers work really well for that. So a couple of things to talk about is the tube. They're, this particular one, it, it's heavy, thick wall. They're a little bit <coughs> hard to find, but you can use the one you could buy at a mailing store, which is a little bit, the diameter's a little bit less, and it's not thick wall. But I was eventually able to find a bunch of these at Raft. If you've heard of Raft, it's a teacher's resource. They had big tubs full of these things, and then we just cut them to the length we wanted. And it's covered with a nylon. And very important, you must put something on there. One, it gives you a nice thing to pull on it, pull this out of it, and it releases the clay from the cardboard. I'm a big tar paper template person. I have lots and lots and lots of them. I use 15 pound tar paper. They make a 30, a 15, and I don't even know what the other one is, like paper. Just so thin and flimsy. But 15 is just right. Joe, can I ask you a question? Sure. Have you ever used PVC pipe for uh, the tube? I have not, but the one woman who was standing here, she teaches it with PVC pipe. And you just, you need to put nylon. Yeah, this, that's, a, that's a cool idea right there. And the pipes are a lot easier to find than the cardboard tubes, but this, if you can get into Raft and get them, they, they went in like 50 cents for this long yeah, a no, piece. Yeah, yeah. It was a great deal. So here's my template, and something I didn't put on your handout is it's 23 by 8 and a quarter. And I brought some extras and some newspaper and markers and scissors if you want to trace around them, they're down there. So, texturing this, I just brought really quick, easy textures. You could spend hours doing the texturing part. <laughs> But to make it easy, I have these nice rolling stamps. I'm just going to roll. Anybody who wants to stand up or come and look, feel free. So I can texture this and then cut with.
with the template because if you cut first, the rolling stretches the clay and you have to recut anyway. And it's not like I have to have this texture in a certain spot. What's the white thing? This is the surprise. This is what we're making after you see this demo. <laughs> A little bit of hands-on. I normally teach hands-on, not demo. So I thought it would be really fun to make the roulettes. The roulette making was introduced and pottery making illustrated. Uh, the November-December issue had that technique in it. It's fun and easy. rock and roll music in the background. <laughs> okay, really important when you're hand building, remember to release the clay from whatever surface you're using. Now and then. So here's the texture. I just cut straight. And then the sides are bevel cut. So just to make it easy, I'm going to just leave it face up like it is and cut one inward and one out. I could teach you the other way. I'll do it the other way. Okay, so I'm going to cut in. Slip. This is paper clay slip. I take paper clay that you, it's commercial paper clay that comes in a 25 pound bag, grate it with a cheese grater into a cup and cover that with water just for a few hours and then whip it together and you have instant paper clay slip. Is it so much stronger than just a normal raccoon slip? What is raccoon slip? We're just like you're using your raccoon clay and making your own slip. Just I, I really like it a lot, and you can use it for repairs in the long dry state. It works great. Hmm. It's great. I had stepped outside. Could you tell me again what was in the the slip you're saying was really paper good? Paper clay slip, the commercial paper clay slip. It's I just grate it with a cheese grater into a cup and cover that with water. And then whip it together, and you have instant great slip. Thank you. Uh, I work. I teach at Higher Fire in San Jose, 
where he sells one pound blocks of paper clay. Because who needs 25 pounds of paper clay? Unless you want to sell one pound blocks to your friends. And a one pound block makes probably two of these full. So it, and it dries out a little. So you keep, I keep adding water. It lasts a long time. So uh, the shrinkage is minimized with the... Uh... It shrinks very little anyway. The color is the biggest issue. I don't use it with black mountain clay. Yeah. Or if you're using Cassius clay or a red clay. If you need to use it, you need to clean up really well with a wet brush. But I use it for all kinds of clay bodies and it works great. And you can use it in low fire. Okay. Jill, is, is the uh, commercial paper clay a lot stronger than the homemade? Or less I don't know the answer to that. Well, I wouldn't make it with newspaper. Make it with that really high quality watercolor paper, that thick paper, and you add it to even water. Even cheap watercolor paper. <laughs> I did. I'm sorry. Even cheap watercolor paper works well. Yeah. Have you uh, have you used it above cone temps? Well, between 10 and 11, but yeah, it's fine. Because when we would fire, we hit. Yeah. Oh, 13. I don't know. It'd be worth a try. It should be. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm rolling this around, and hopefully it's going to come together. It's a little bit short. It's like a giant roll. I don't want to roll it too hard because I'll lose some of my texture. you do of these is slightly different thickness of clay, unless you're doing a production of them and you've got your slab roller set for the right amount, right thickness. I tried to dry the slab a little before well, yesterday and this morning because I want to move on to the next step. So hopefully it is dry enough to remove the tube already. I normally would use a heat gun on it. And get it a little, it has to support itself when I take the tube out. That's all it has to do.
here is where you'll see a problem if you take it out too soon. It'll start sagging and bulging at the bottom, but it seems to be pretty good. stocking on there, that's really a cool idea. That is a great idea. smaller one because I don't want to have to cut it off. It's easier if I want it to look really neat to use the smaller one and just stretch it a little bit by rolling it in every direction, well, in several directions. So first, a little texture. If you set this part on your wheel, it will melt your wheel surface, the plastic. Yeah. So you always want to put it on concrete or wood, a bat, a wooden bat, not a plastic bat. And never touch the metal part. It's very, very hot. But they sure work great. Just Google Raft San Jose, R-A-F-T. Don't you have to be a tech to utilize it? Yeah, I, so the story get a one day pass. is that you have to be a real teacher, not a ceramics you know, studio teacher. So I go in there not knowing that I couldn't purchase anything. But if you pay $35, they'll let you shop. Well, I was buying $2 worth of things. I wasn't paying $35 for shopping. But the nice lady in there who was working in there said, I'll 
can come get them for you. So she checked out and I gave her the money for them. But yes, you do need to be a teacher to shop there. You need to be a member, I guess. Mm -hmm. You can get a one-day pass. Mm -hmm. Day pass now for like five bucks. Oh, really? They did not offer that. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe they took that away because it was too easy. Yeah, maybe. I could have been in there for a few years. I don't know what and other people like that have access to it, so they must have deals. Yes, starting to shrink. dry small things like this with the heat gun they dry really fast so the edges are a little not so nice so we're just going to roll this makes the edges much nicer the slip is it's very easy to see from here. It's very shiny wet. why you have it that size, that height? Is there some reason other than... Originally how that came up with that size. It seems really comfortable for you to be working on it. it yes, it's... Yeah. You know, Height-wise, if they were shorter, they probably wouldn't sound very good. I think if you make them short, you don't get nearly as much soothing sound, rain sound. But I've seen them shorter. Okay, so this is looking pretty good now. Okay, the nails. I recommend this uh, finished nail. It has no head on it, really. Just a very tiny head. There's a finished nail and there's a common nail. The common is the one you build a house with, a framing nail that has a big head on it. Also, they come galvanized or bright or stainless. It's, you'll know when you pick up the stainless and you check out and it costs 20 bucks for one pound of nails. Because <laughs> I did that. Why are these nails so expensive? Well, if you would read the package, you would know why. So anyway, uh, get the, I don't use galvanized, but my students accidentally have bought ones with heads and with galvanized. Nobody's used stainless. And they all go through the low fire okay. So it's not the end of the world, but I recommend this one not galvanized, finish nail. So the nail piercing is every half inch in a helix pattern around here. And I do them about two inches apart. So the easiest thing to do is mark where you're going to start and then go over two inches, mark it again. I used to do it without marking it, and now I ended up with a 
three inches over here and one inch over there, so it's easier to have a, mark, a starting point, even though they're not exact close enough. So you just put these in, push them all the way to the, you don't push the head flat in it, you push it to where the little head bulge starts. Every half inch. I am not going to do this whole thing. <laughs> it takes a while. But does it really matter if they're so even or is, it have you noticed matter. in the sound a random? But it does matter that they go in a helix pattern. Oh, okay. It does make a difference. And someone asked me, don't they get loosed after they're fired? The answer is no, they don't because the clay shrinks around them and makes them quite tight. They do oxidize a little bit in the firing, so you'll notice, uh, in, this is a bisque one, that there's some black kind of carbony stuff breaks off of these, but it's, it's pretty normal. I usually just wind my finger over all of it gently to kind of knock off some of that oxidation. And the clay shrinking around the nail doesn't ever crack? It hasn't. But they're only going through low fire. It doesn't take a whole pound to do this. More like three quarters of a pound. And if you want to teach it to a class or have a class do this in a school setting, you can probably find a place that sells 10 pound boxes of nails way cheaper than one pound boxes. Consider the, it's a third of a bag of clay, a box of nails, and three hours worth of this. Um, you can roll coils and cut them up. I was going to say. But I think they eventually might chip off the edges because they're not rounded. Uh, I normally would watch a movie or something and sit and do this in my lap. Maybe over the next month, every project you have with scraps, I do that Roll as well. Minutes. Because I use them inside other things, so I've discovered it's nice to have them on hand. And I do that with a lot of my scraps. These are bisque? These are green. Oh, okay. They are not bisque fired. They don't need to be bisque, pre bisque So there's another method to this. I would normally would put all my nails in and dump these in. Put the lid on and it's finished. Uh, except for the air holes, kind of air holes. But another way is to fire it with the lid off, fire it separately, and then put these in afterwards and glue the lid on the glaze or just glue it on if you only need to misfire it. I have not done that, but some people like that process. For me, I'd rather get it all finished. So I would dump these in, put the I'll lid on. make sure they don't stick to the wet clay. It's not that wet inside. I mean, you can't make it stand up when it's super wet, so you know it's not that wet. I, some of them might, but not that many. There's a lot of them here. <laughs> Have you ever used anything else? I haven't, but I understand if you use stainless steel na nails and stainless steel ball bearings, you can do point ten. I tried using rice or beans or... I have not done that. Out. Like that? No. <laughs> no, but you can do it on Well, no, you can use... Yeah. first. Yeah, you oh, biscuit it. first it's and then dump, in, dump in, in some right. rice And then put the lid on. Yeah. But then that'd be it. I don't think you get the same sound. Maybe uh, with... Even 
sand. It's not going to sound the same. Okay, so putting a hole in it, I use a nail. And I usually put two holes, one near this spot end and one near this end. Get air, just to get the air out of it and help it dry. If you don't put the holes in it, and you fire it too soon, it will kind of blow up yeah. in the kiln and take out a lot of people's work on the way. So be sure and put air holes in it. Even with all the nails, they still need the air holes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It's That's surprising. It does. <laughs> so we, this one is the raccoon one, and they do raccoon really nicely. You need to leave somewhere for it to sit in your kiln, depending on the type of raccoon kiln you have. Wiped off the glaze on one end, you can set it, stand it up. They so usually will just stand in your kiln like that. Or if they have to lean, that's the easiest way. In my kiln, raccoon kiln, you reach in, it's an old electric kiln, so I can have them leaning against the wall inside all the way around. Uh, I think the kiln where the, you pull the lid up, you have to lean it against something or stand it up. So you just have to think about the glaze. So you don't want the glaze to stick to the shelf or whatever you're leaning in. This one is glaze with low fire glaze. And it's wiped off. So you'll see a little bit of shine in here where the low fire glaze is in the deeper parts. But you did that when it was green because you said you're only After it was firing once. No, I fire them twice. Oh, you do? They okay. go through bisque twice. What, and what temperature are you bisking? Uh, well, it depends where I am at the time, but probably 06 to 04. Okay. Depending. It's a standard bisque temperature in a lot of studios. Mm -hmm. um, so low fire glaze will mature in that. So you send it through the bisque firing, then you either glaze it with low fire glaze and wipe off the excess because, it, again, it's got to have. If you fire it like this, you can wipe off the bottom only and you can glaze it. I have not tried to glaze around the nails with a solid bit of glaze on here. Don't know how it would work, but you can see the glaze around the nails and it seems to be fine. This one is stained with red iron oxide stain. And so, so it, yeah, this temperature, iron stain, I presume other stains as well, really kind of comes off after it's fired, that second firing, because it's just not a high enough temperature. So you could take a wet cloth and just wipe it off. You can see the red. So what I did with this was I sprayed it with varathane spray, clear varathane satin finish spray, and it actually brightens up the stain color. It makes a really nice, just barely discernible sheen on it. So I was really happy with that. And it was a very light. I stood it on a piece of newspaper and just sort of went around it that quickly. I just wanted a really light coat. So the red iron stain that I like and that other people seem to really like is two parts red iron oxide, one part copper carb. Wait, can you go slower, please? <laughs> oh, wait, second. R-I-O, red iron oxide. Yeah. One part copper carb, one part yellow ochre, one part rutile. So just take and put a little water in the blender. I have a blender made for studio work. And uh, it's not made for that, but I use it for that. I put a little water in, put the dry ingredients in, and start mixing it and adding water till it gets watery and not creamy. Creamy is too thick. And I used one fourth cup measurements as the parts, and it makes about a quart of stain, which will last you for a couple of years or more. So, backing up just a little, uh, for Raku, I like to tear, put terra sigillata on my pieces when they're bone dry before I Raku. This is a great staining method. I, someone said, you should send it in to Ceramics Monthly. Get a free subscription. But I haven't done that, so maybe somebody else will do it for me. Stain. I didn't even know you guys sold it. <laughs> but it's pretty easy to make. Yeah, it's easy to make. But some of us don't want to do that. Well, I, mean, I have a blender. I have ingredients, so yeah. it's easy for me. Um, 
It does settle. No matter where you buy it, it's going to settle. So be sure and stir it up. This is a chamois. It's a synthetic chamois that I bought. Uh, I think I bought them at Target, a little tube of it. And you get, I think, four of these from one sheet of chamois cloth. And I, you saw I didn't squeeze it out super tight, but squeezed a lot of the water out of it. Fold it in quarters. And apply the stain. Try not to get it on your floor. It dries super fast because bisque is so absorbent. And what I've discovered, this method works really good for the rain stick as well. But especially on, if you're using porcelain or glacia, the smoother clays, where when you wipe with a sponge, it pretty much removes all the stain. You're going, darn, how do I get that? You have to restain it. I like lots of stain when I'm staining. I want it to really show. So I got rid of the sponge idea. And as you know, if you don't, when you're staining, don't leave any what we call hookahs. No holes with no stain. They show like little lights. So make sure you have it all covered. Then you take your squeezed out chamois. And the nice thing is you've got it folded in quarters and you have the whole other side of it. So you aren't in the water, in and out, in and out, in and out like you do with the sponge. And you just run it over the surface. Where did you get the shamans? You can buy them at auto parts stores or Target or Walmart. It's a synthetic, look in the auto section, chamois for cars. Look how much stain is still in do this. It's great. <laughs> I've only used a little tiny bit. Amazing. I can use four different sides here, four different amazing. sides there. And for, like I said, for a smooth clays, it is really, really nice. Okay, then this would be bisque fired again. And then I take it home and varathane spray it. And it's finished. So what I want to teach you how to make are these uh, roulettes. It is squeezed off of it, and it's a little bit round in shape. Just roll it gently. It doesn't need to be a perfect coil because you're going to flatten this and end up cutting it. So just like this is fine. About that thick. Thick. And I put boards on the table that show you what 3 8 inch because I've discovered not everybody knows what 3 8 inch is. <laughs> on the board you're working on now and then. You can use, I, there's a few other odd shapes, but you're going to cut around this. For me, I'm using this one, so I'm going to lay it face down and roll on the back of it with the small end of the pony roller if you have one of those. If you don't, just make make do. You want the texture all the way rolled in. Or use a straight edge and um, cut along the side, the long side straight. Don't cut the ends yet. You're going to cut across that. Just roll it in, roll it in, roll it in. No, I'm looking for the cut. Cut along the sides, they're straight. The ends are beveled, so you're going to undercut one and out cut the other one. This clay is so soft. Okay, so I've undercut on one end and outer cut on the other end. Beveled is going to go together. So score those ends, put slip on it.
I put a funnel on your table so you can round them because they get kind of out of shape. The low fire white is so easy to work with that you won't have it as misshapen as mine. <laughs> Thank you.